Hi, everybody. Welcome to part four of the demonstration for the angle plate project in Machining 210. Um, today is the day that we blend the radius to the inside corner. Let me take off this ring. Last time, we uh, drilled and reamed this hole, and then we bandsaw cut this excess material out, and now we're going to uh, cut those surfaces so that they blend to the tangent points of the reamed hole and uh, get a nice little uh, inside radius there on the inside surfaces. Nice. Okay, we are right now, if you're following along, which I hope that you are, uh, in your project planning worksheet, we are on step number 15 right now, um, which is where we rough out this surface, what we're calling surface F. And uh, remember that those are labeled on sheet four of the print tells you what all the different surfaces are, because at this point it gets difficult to um, identify all the surfaces um, relative to one another, right? So we actually just went ahead and labeled all of them with letters, okay? So surface F is this one back here. So that's the one where um, it's gonna end up being 500 thousandths, this thickness, so that inside surface there, the shorter of the two inside surfaces. Okay. So for this step, we are going to be using, and actually for all of the radius blending steps, we're going to be using this tool called a tri-mill, um, called a tri-mill for maybe two reasons, because it has three inserts and also because those inserts are triangular in shape. That makes sense. Um, we install it just as we install everything, making sure that we line up with the key. Where is that pesky little key? There it is. Lock it in. Okay, now we're gonna put the part in and um, we should select some new parallels um, because we need to have the part sitting high enough so that we can actually finish all these surfaces um, without hitting the tops of the vice jaws, okay? Um, so the smallest surface that I'm going to be machining um, uh, or the smallest uh, dimension that I'm going to need to uh, sort of clear is gonna be that half inch uh, dimension right here on this side. Uh, and so, let's see. Remember that these are one and three quarters of an inch, sort of standard. So if I wanna hold on to a half an inch or hold on to like three eighths of an inch, right? Um, one and three quarter minus three eighths of an inch is one and three eighths of an inch. So that makes sense. Hold on to three eighths of an inch. You could actually hold on to a half of an inch because we'll still have a small amount of clearance there, but you're gonna get really, really close to the vice jaws. So yeah, technically it'll still clear, but you know, be careful. So we'll grab some parallels. Let's see, are these labeled? Yes, they are. There we go, one and three eighths of an inch. Make sure those are nice and clean. Everything should be nice and clean. Okay. There we go. Right in the middle. Then move this out a little bit, tamp it down. Make sure that neither of the parallels are moving. Okay, good. So this first step is just roughing out this material here. Uh, and the reason for that is that there's so much material on the surface that's 90 degrees from this one that we're gonna cut first that we won't be able to physically move the tri-mill far enough this way um, in order to cut this to blend to the radius without also um, interfering with this surface. Like we'll take a chunk out of this thing if we try to machine this down right now. So we're actually gonna rough both of these surfaces out so that they're a little bit closer, maybe like 15 thousandths of an inch or so over top of where the, um, the uh, apex of the hole is. Uh, and then we'll flip it around and we'll do the 
same thing to the other side and, uh, and then finish that one first, actually. But for now, we just need to get this kind of close. It's a good idea to try and shorten up the stick out out of the quill as much as possible. Yeah, something like that. So maybe you can see a little bit better from this angle. Um, this right here is the, uh, the, you know, the corner of the cutting edge here on the insert. And that needs to blend down to the bottom of this hole right here. And unfortunately, we just won't be able to get far enough this way to position the cutter in the correct location to get it to the point where it needs to blend into that hole without slamming into this surface right there, right? So we just need to rough both of these out to get them a little bit closer, right, so that we can maneuver the, the tool appropriately. Okay, I'm going to position this just so that I know it's not gonna slam into anything. So that's pretty close. Maybe just right there. That looks pretty good. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and do a static touch off here, a nice quick static touch off. Something like that. Raise the knee a little bit. Again, you just want to minimize the stick out on the quill as much as possible. Touch off, zero, okay. Bring it back up a little. Move off the part, back up to my zero on the knee. Okay, turn this on. Not gonna tell you the speed that we're gonna run this thing because it's something that you should have figured out, right? Okay, now I'm going to go in uh, like 20 thousandths. Okay, I know I have a lot more than that to take off, but I want to take a small cleanup cut so I have something to measure, okay? Um, the speed of this is going to be, well, that's another thing that you should have calculated, so let me go ahead and set that. Moving away from the part. Okay, that looks good right there. And off we go. And I don't know if you could see that, but it actually started to take a heavier cut when it got over to this side. That surface finish looks real nice though. Uh, make sure that you uh, check out these inserts, right? Because they can very easily um, get all messed up and then they won't, uh, they won't cut very nicely. All right, but this looks fantastic. So we are moving on to micrometers now because micrometers are much more accurate than dial calipers and we're gonna need some good numbers off of this thing. So, um, Go ahead and check this out, just like so. I zero set this micrometer before I used it, of course. I like to use the ratchet stop. Okay, that looks good. So you can either read it directly on, and that's actually a good way to do it, or if you're gonna pull it off, just make sure that you set the stop, because when you pull the micrometer off of the surface, it has a tendency to rotate a little bit, and of course, that's gonna, um, yeah, it's gonna throw off your numbers, right? So, we have 720 thousandths and a couple tenths, 720. So, 720 thousandths. So, we need to get the, this surface about 15 thousandths or so above the, um, the bottom apex of the hole. Remember that this dimension here, when all is said and done, from the bottom of the hole to this surface on the bottom, is going to be 500 thousandths. But we left about 15 on this surface. Actually, it was like either 13 or 14. I can't remember now. Um, but it was about that value. So if we take 500 plus 
15, 515, plus another 15 for the top surface, that gets us to 530 thousandths. So if we cut this dimension um, to 530 thousandths, we should be about 15 thou over that hole. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Going from 720 to 530, uh, that's going to give us 190 thousandths that we have to take off. I'm only going to go about 50 at a time with this cutter, so that's going to be like four cuts. Okay, so first cut of 50 thou going from where I was already at the 20, so now I'm going to go to the 70 on the dial. Go ahead and engage. I'm just going to wrap it back over that surface. Um, you know, it's, it's a good idea to try and do a conventional cut rather than a climb cut uh, with this cutter. So that means, you know, the cutter's coming around this way, right? And so we're going to feed the part against that direction of rotation, right? So I'm starting with the tool on the far side of the part and then feeding the part into it. That's the idea. Another 50 thousandths from the 70. Okay, now we're at 100, that's 30. And then to the 20 again. Engage. Okay, another 50 will get us to 150. Remember, we're going to 190. So from 20 to 70 again, another cut. Another quick check just to make sure that I don't overcut this thing. So that's telling me 52550, 550 plus 18 and a half. That's 568, let's say. 568. So to get down to 530. Uh, actually, we're looking at uh, 40 thousandths. Yeah, so that's actually, that actually follows what we thought it was going to be. Okay. 40 thou, going from the 70, 80, 90, 0 again, and then to the 10. All right, so you can see that, um, you know, we still have a little bit of you know, material to go. You can still see that the, uh, the I guess the, the hole, the cylindrical surface of the hole, as it reaches down and comes to the bottom, it comes back up a little bit past that lowest apex, right? And then it kind of intersects the surface on the top. So that's how you know that you still have material there. So that's good. That's what we wanted, all right? Now we just have to flip it around. Clean everything off. And you can see that that tossed up a pretty ugly burr. We should deal with that. Let's see how just a file does with that. Yeah, doing pretty well. Okay. Nice and clean. Open up the jaws a little bit for this surface because it's a little bit bigger. Make sure that's clean too. Tighten it all down. Okay. Nice and tight. Okay, we're basically going to do the same thing again. Um, this time when we are 
positioning the cutter, we have to be a little bit more careful of where we put it. Um, because now we actually, on this side, we can get far enough to this direction to reach the bottommost apex of the, of the hole. In fact, we can over travel. And if we over travel, then we're going to cut into this backside of the hole a little bit. And that's something we definitely don't want to do. Because then you'll get something like this where you can see that somebody has clearly cut too far back and they just remove that radius, right? So there's no, no way to come back from that. You know, you can't really put material back on there very easily. Um, so you just have to start over, right? So it's not that hard to position this thing. You know, you just do it by eye. So maybe bring this down a little bit. Just so you can see what you're doing. And then just move it over so that it looks like it, uh, you know, it lines up for the most part. You know, far enough this way so that you can cut the surface, but not so far that you're going to dig into the other surface and just lock it down. Just a little something to be mindful of, not really something that you have to pay all that much attention to. Okay? I'm going to do another little static touch off here. Just touch off on that surface while it's not spinning. Nice and gentle. Lock the quill. I'm going to zero out the knee. Back it off. One rev. Come off the part. Go back into my zero plus 20 thou. All right. Start this thing up. Take a cut. Now, actually, it really doesn't matter which way you feed the cutter for this cut. You can feed it in both directions. It, it really doesn't matter. The, the whole Klein milling, conventional milling thing is just not really relevant here when, you know, you're cutting, you know, like a big circle, which is, you know, it just kind of looks, the pattern looks the same. The cutter is engaged in the same way, no matter which way you feed it, is what I'm trying to say, for a surface that is this broad because um, it's almost the same size as the cutter is, right? So then it just doesn't make any difference. But I'm going to do it this way just so that you can actually um, uh, see me measuring stuff. Again, we're going to use a micrometer for this. There we go. Rock it around so we know we've got a good measurement. Lock it. Okay, and uh, what does it say? It says 7, 25, 50, 75. Okay, so 800 and 1 thousandths. 801. Okay, I can work with that. Now, again, we're going to try and get this to be 15 thousandths of an inch over the top of the, uh, the lowest, most apex of the hole in this direction. Uh, so if you remember, this is going to end up being not 500, but 630 thousandths from the bottom of the hole to this surface once all is said and done. Um, so we, at, we left 15 thousandths on this surface down here, or about 15 thousandths. It was 13 or 14, whatever it was. Um, but we can use 15 in these roughing calculations. So uh, that's 630 plus 15 is 645. So if we cut this to 645 plus 15 is 660. If we cut this to 660, we'll be 15 thousandths of an inch over the top of the hole. Okay? So let's do that. We're looking at 801 thousandths minus 660. We're going to take off 141 thousandths. So that's three cuts. Go ahead and turn this thing on. Okay, so I'm going to go 50, so from 20, going to go to the 70, right there. Go a little closer to the cut and engage. I am going to go ahead and take a cut the other direction. So another 50 thousandths is going to get us to 100. So 70, 80, 90, 0, 10, 20 again.
another final measurement here just to make sure that I didn't get too happy with that cutter. So it says that we are at 625.50. So we're at right at 700. Beautiful. So to get down to 660, we got to take 40 thousandths. Start this thing up. Move it closer to the cut. Going to go in uh, 40 thousandths. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So 20 plus 40 is 60 thou on the, um, on the knee. Here we go. All right, let's get all those chips off there. Those chips turned a beautiful blue color. They say that's the color of money in the machine shop because you know that you're running your cutter hard enough. All right, back this thing off. Again, we got a real nasty burr on there. Let's go ahead and file that off. Okay, there we go. So now we are ready to go in and uh, actually start finishing these surfaces. But uh, you know, there are two ways that I mentioned we can do this. One is just to kind of do it visually by eye using the, uh, the layout lines. Um, and I think I'll do the first one that way. And then the second side we'll do by the numbers with uh, sheet five of your print. Uh, problem is with the way that the camera is right now, uh, we don't have any uh, bluing on this side of the part and the bluing on the other side has all but rubbed off. So I'm going to go ahead and re-blue this, re-strike all those lines that we had made before at the same points and then we'll be able to use them for the actual uh, cuts here. I think that is much better. That'll be much easier to see. Uh, but before we actually get to cutting this thing to those lines, we actually now have to orient this part correctly in the vise. So if you think about it, the only surface that's actually finished on this whole part right now is the hole, right? That's the only surface that isn't gonna have any more work done to it. So if we want to blend these surfaces to the radius uh, of the hole, then that means that we actually have to reference all of those surfaces to the hole, right? So when we, when we install the part in the vise, we need to make sure that the hole is oriented correctly, meaning that it's square up and down, right? So that like the line that defines the apex of the bottom of the hole is square to the machine, right? It's parallel to the table. Um, and uh, so in order to do that, we'll, we'll actually have to indicate that hole in and adjust it if need be. And that's actually step 17 in your project planning worksheet, right? Align the bottom of the through hole. We're gonna use our good friends, the test indicator and the indicol in order to do that. All right, go ahead and install this. There are a number of different ways to position it. and I seem to have found the most difficult way imaginable. Okay, let me go ahead and move this around. All right, let me move that out of the way for just a second. Let's tighten this down, like so. Tamp it down onto parallels. Okay, nice. Okay, gonna move this into position and uh, put it in low gear so it doesn't move around. Okay, so now I'm gonna move the part into position like so and I'm going to drop the quill so that I can start registering some movement on the dial. There we go, very nice. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here, maybe just, I think that'll be easier to see uh, on the camera. Rotate the dial. Okay, right there. 
All right, so uh, what I need to do is find the low point of the hole. And in order to do that, I'm going to move the y-axis in and out. And what's going to happen is that the needle is going to dip down into the bottom of the hole and then come back up the other side, right? It's going to kind of rock back and forth. And so when we find that lowest point, that's where the, the needle is going to sort of, sort of like move in one direction. It's going to get lower and lower and lower. And then it's going to bottom out, and it's going to start going back up again. And where it's, it changes direction, that's our low point. OK, so I don't know if you saw that. As I move it back and forth, it finds that little low spot right there. And uh, that's the point. Now what I'm going to do is run the table left and right from one side to the other. And we're going to watch for changes in the 0. right? If it doesn't change at all, then that means that the part is, uh, right now, where the part is currently, the hole is square to the table. Right? And that's what we want. I'm not seeing it move really at all. Now I get to the other side here. Let me move it forwards and backwards again on the y-axis. Again, it doesn't really move. So uh, I don't know how I got so lucky, quite honestly, because this never happens. Yeah, I don't know. It's just not, not moving at all. So what if it was moving? We would need to use this bag o shims right here, just filled with an assortment of different thicknesses of shims, right? And so uh, it's got everything from, I think the smallest is one thousandth of an inch up to, I can't remember how big it goes, probably goes up to eight. Um, and so what we do is, you know, it, whatever difference we had here from one side to the other, let, let's say that it was moving two thousandths, right? And over on this side, it was reading negative two thousandths, so counterclockwise by two thousandths. Well, then we put two two thousand shims, one here and one here, because we want to bring it all up together. We don't want to get it twisted, right? So one here and one here, tamp it back down, and then recheck it, right? And then you know, we just make up that difference, and then it should get to zero. And we want it within, like, I don't know, like within, within a half thou would be really nice. But sometimes you can only get one thousandths. Uh, and that's simply because the smallest shim size that we have is one thousandths of an inch. So, you know, that's your resolution right there. I'm not going to mess with this right now. Maybe we'll get lucky, and when we do the other side, that side will be out. Okay, and then I can show you how to do it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and remove that, and uh, we'll save it for later because we're going to have to use it again here pretty soon. So I'm actually going out of the order of the project planning worksheet right now, um, and that's because we need to calculate, or really we need to set where the position of the cutter is in this direction. Right? Remember that really we have, we have to set the cutter position in this direction so that we're far enough over to blend to the apex in that direction. But then we also need to find a depth, right? We have to cut enough off of the surface to get it down to that bottommost apex of the hole, but not too far, because then again, we'll just cut too much and we won't get that nice, you know, there'll be like a little line right there, right? We don't want any line right there where the, uh, the hole and the surface intersect, right? Um, but because we took this out of the vise and then we put it back in, uh, we can't really trust that this surface right here is uh, perfectly positioned, right? Um, it, that it repeated exactly. So what I'm going to do is actually go and position the cutter first, take a cut, a little skim cut, and then we can uh, do a measurement and uh, figure out exactly what our depth is going to be. Okay. So remember, I said that we were going to do the uh, visual method first. So let's do that. Okay. Let's bring this a little bit closer. That lined up. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down as much as I can without touching. Yep, there we go. I don't want to touch the surface with the inserts because I don't want to drag it. 
But what we're going to be looking for here is we, we need to find the apex of the cutter, right? Because as those inserts come around, right, they sort of get furthest out this direction, and then they come back around again, right? And so we need to find where that, that furthest most point is. So that looks to be about it right there. Okay, and then we're just going to move in and out in order to line up the bottom of the insert with this line right there that represents the center of the hole, right? So the center of the hole is going to be where the lowest point is, okay? So, you know, this is something you just do by eye. Uh, and you try to get it as close as you can. Remember that the insert has a radius on it, right? So you're not lining it up with the, uh, you know, in the camera right now, it's shown as the far right side of the insert that's kind of like straight up and down. You're not lining it up with that because actually the part that's going to touch is the bottom of the insert right there, okay? So we're trying to line up that lowest most point of the insert. Okay, so to my eyes, that looks about as good as I can get it, okay? I'm going to go ahead and hit the Y-axis uh, digital readout button. Uh, so now I've recorded that position. And so now I can just move away from that position and uh, always move back to it whenever I need to. Okay, remember that we've got to take a cut. Um, on this surface so that we can reestablish a good reference surface, a machine surface that was machined in this setup so we have a reliable point to base all of our future measurements and adjustments off of. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and just do another quick little static touch off right there, lock it down, zero the knee, back it off, one revolution. Make sure that I'm back at the same spot where I set my zero just now. Right there, that's my zero. Okay, I'm going to go back into my zero on the knee, and then I'm going to take maybe just five thousandths or so. Okay, just five thou, nothing too major. Put this back into gear, and uh, take a cut. All right, I'm going to wrap it back over the part. Okay, and so now it's time to put that indicator back in. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this over back on top of where the hole was, and uh, don't move the quill, okay, because the quill, you know, there's not really a good way to get that to repeat perfectly in its position, so we could lose the position of our tool here, but you can move the knee up and down, that would be fine, just remember where you were, right, I, was, I had taken a cut of five, so I'm at the five thousandths above that particular zero in the rotation. Okay, I'm going to come down again and find the apex of the hole, just like we did before. Okay, I'm going to feed forward, so you can see it's sort of like dipping down and stopping and changing direction again. So right where it stops and changes direction, changes direction, that's, that's where we want to be. Okay, and zero out that point and double check it. Right there. So the way that we're going to tell how much more we need to take off of this top surface here is uh, we're going to measure what the difference is on the indicator between the low point of the hole where we have it zeroed right now 
and where our surface is currently, right? So whatever that indicator reads, that tells us we have that much more material on here that has to be removed. So let me go ahead and I'm going to push the y-axis that way to move the part out and to move the indicator up onto this surface. All right, and what does this say? It starts moving up, 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 and that's where it stops. So I don't know how well you can see that, but it's saying 13 thousandths on the money. Okay, 13 thousandths. That's how much we have to take off. Now, the reason, just to reiterate, why we took a little skim cut on here in this setup is because we took the part out and then put it back in, right, and potentially even shimmed it, right? And so then it would mean that this surface where we cut it initially would be sitting kind of out. And so, uh, you know, maybe it's sitting high here and low over here, or maybe it's sitting high over here and low over here, or whatever it is, right? We want to get uh, this surface so that no matter where I move that indicator, right, it's not going to change its measurement. Because all of the surface is sitting at exactly the same point. It's all coplanar to the table right now. I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to go ahead and remove this. Okay, I think that we are ready to do this. So I'm going to come back over and uh, position my part at my zero on the y-axis. Right there. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back up with the knee to where I took my last cut. So that looks pretty close. And then I was at the five thousandths right there. And so I know I need to take 13 thousandths. So 5 plus 13 is 18, so I'm going to move the knee to the 18 thousandths position. Okay, time to take a cut. All right, I, I locked the y-axis so that it wasn't able to move, right, because I don't want it drifting as I'm taking my cut. Don't need to lock the knee because, again, it's so heavy that it's not going to really pose a problem. And we're going to take all this in one go. I know that's a little bit scary, but you know... Um, fortune favors the bold. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. Move the cutter back up. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to... I don't want to drag the cutter over the, uh, the part at this point. All right, let's take a look at that. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty good to me. Um, you know, just running your sort of finger and fingernail along that. I don't feel like, you know, any place where it raises up at all. No lips or anything like that. Definitely not too low. Doesn't feel like I'm too high either. That actually came out pretty good. Pretty happy with that. And you can even see from this uh, close-up side view that it blends pretty nicely, just visually, with the uh, scribe lines that are there. Um, you know, it doesn't always come out this good using this method. I mean, it's a lot less consistent than using the numerical method. Uh, but uh, this seemed to come out pretty nicely. So here's one option. But the second side, you know, we're going to do with, with the numerical method so that we can teach you both ways. Get all this cleaned up. Back the part off. Remember that you've got these big burrs right here, so let's get those off as well. Make sure it's nice and clean in here. Okay, now it's time to do the other side. So close the vice jaws down on there. And uh, remember, we're going to have to repeat all those steps again to finish this second side. So we need to inspect it for, um, for the hole being out of squareness with the table. So let me go ahead and tamp this down. So I'm going to have to move this well away. 
Yeah, you gotta move it far enough so that you can actually get the hammer in there without breaking bits off of the mill head. And then we need to set up the indicator again. Okay, got to find the bottom of that hole again. I'm just going to go ahead and bring the quill down. Oh, may have over-traveled. It's a lot easier to control this thing with the knee. There we go. Move it forward until I find that low spot. Okay, there it is. So now I'm going to run from one side to the other. Okay, so zero there, and over on the other side, well, a half of a thousandth in the positive direction. So, not very much, folks, unfortunately. I wish I could have given you a little bit of a weirder number. Well, you know what, Let, let's throw this out just for the fun of it. Okay, so I went ahead and knocked out this setup. So now the hole should not read zero all the way across. <laughs> and then I'll go ahead and uh, correct this as if there were an actual error on the part. So let's go ahead and see what it is right now. So I am at the low point of the hole. And if I move it to the other side, what does it say? It says, yep just about five thousandths out in the counterclockwise direction, meaning that the plunger is less depressed on this side than on the other, which means that this side must be low. This side must be low. So I can just put two five thousand shims here and here, and hopefully that will, uh, that will get us zero all the way across, and then we can just recheck. So just going to grab some 5,000 shims out of the 5,000 shim bag. I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay, loosen the part. One shim and another shim. Again, the point of adding two shims is just so that that way you don't put a twist in the part. Right, we want both sides uh, to be supported here, right? Because we want to bring it up like that. We don't want to cause any weird twisting. Okay, go ahead and tighten that down. Okay, I'm going to have to go ahead and tamp this down. Okay, that parallel is moving. Okay, neither parallel is moving. Put the indicator back. Okay, I refound the uh, bottom most point of the hole. Let's see what it is now. Okay, so that's about one thousandth. Okay, can't really get much better than that, right? because my resolution for the shims is only a thousandth of an inch, okay? So that's going to be acceptable. Um, here's another thing is, uh, so if, you know, th this isn't always, you know, 100% uh, you know, uh, proportional, right? Sometimes you put the shim in there that you think it needs and, well, everything kind of moves around a little bit and so you may need to try a couple of different shims until you get within your one thousandth range. Um, and of course, if this side had been high, then instead of adding shims here, I would have added shims on the other side, right? So that's all you've got to do. But uh, this is looking pretty good. So let me go ahead and remove this indicator. So this side we had discussed doing uh, numerically, okay? And in order to do that, we're going to follow this sheet right here that walks you through exactly how to calculate where to position the cutter based off of some dimensions that we can get directly off of the part and some dimensions that we know off of the cutter. Okay, um, so here it's actually sequential here step by step. So first thing to do is touch off the side of the insert on face B 
with the feeler gauge. So we're calling this face B right here. All right. We're going to touch the side of the cutter off of that surface with a feeler gauge or a shim. Okay. So that's going to locate the cutter based off of that edge. And then we can move it from that position based off of our calculations. All right. So let's do that now. I'm going to move this over, bring this down. So it's pretty close to that vice job, but obviously not touching. So I'm going to use this shim right here to touch off. Uh, but I don't know. It, it's not labeled what size it is. It came in the three thousandths of an inch shim bag. But, you know, can you really trust that? Probably not. So best thing to do, of course, is just to measure with a micrometer. OK, yeah, and it does say three thousandths of an inch. OK, good. Doesn't matter what size the shim is, but it does matter that you know what size it is. So the trick here is just to use, you know, you put the shim in between the cutter and the surface, and you're using this to get a sort of positive touch off uh, so that you know that you've actually made contact. We use it just like we do with the height gauge on the surface plate. So with the tool in neutral, right, I'm going to kind of rotate it back and forth so that I can make sure that I touch off on that high point, slowly moving in little by little until I can feel that at the furthest apex of the cutter position, I'm tugging very, very, very gently on that shim. So I'm just moving in and out in Y little by little. You can kind of move it in and out or you can just sort of feel for a tug when you move the cutter. Not quite there, huh? Oh, I got a ways to go. Oh, yep, right there. I can feel a little bit of a tug. So right there. I could probably go just uh, maybe like two tenths more. Yeah, that's perfect right there. You can see how it just barely tugs when you hit that apex. Okay, so now I know that my cutter is three thousandths away from that surface. I'm going to go ahead and zero out the y-axis on my digital readout. And then I can bring this up. Position that right there. OK. Next thing is to measure distance BC. So BC is from this side to this side. So that's this measurement right here, BC from this side to this side. Okay. Basically, the idea here is that we know what this dimension is. We can measure this dimension. And we know what the radius is because, well, it's whatever size reamer we put in there, OK? So if we take this overall size and we subtract this wall thickness and the radius, that gets us from here to the lowest point of the, of the hole. That's the whole idea there, OK? So let's measure BC. OK, so we're going to use a micrometer to check that. And uh, oh, I can already see kind of a problem here. Aha. So. The problem is that I'm sitting too low in the vice jaws, and I can't get a good reading right there. So if I had some bigger parallels and that I had more surface exposed, then I could get a good measurement across the, the contacts. But as it is right now, I have painted myself into a corner. So what I'm going to have to do is take this out, measure it, and then put it back in and double check that hole to make sure that it's good left to right, right? So we'll, we'll have to take it out of the setup, which means that we have to go back in and double check everything that we just did. OK, done. And that's what I got. 1 inch, 9.06, OK? Um, you know, no need to show you what I did there. Um, but I had to recheck everything. But anyway, 1 inch 906, you know, I, that's the same number I got with the dial calipers, but it's really important to double check it with the micrometers. Okay? So now we need to do uh, measure thickness D with ball micrometer. So from here to here, we're going to use a ball anvil micrometer to measure that. Uh, and the reason is that the ball anvil micrometer will be able to measure right there at that apex. So this is what it looks like. Uh, and you can see that it's got 
you know, the anvil on it is a ball, right, whereas, uh, you know, the spindle still has a flat contact point. You can see that that fits up very neatly in the apex of the hole. Uh, and so we can get a really good measurement of this outside surface to the, the furthest most point of the hole uh, in, in this direction. So instead of just measuring across these two uh, flat surfaces down here, we can actually measure to the hole itself. But of course, we need a ball anvil to be able to do that. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'll pull that out. So it's telling me 625 plus 15. So 640 thousandths is what we've got from the inside of that hole there to that outside surface, 640. Okay, 640 thousandths is D. Uh, and we already know what this radius is, R1, right? Because that's just whatever the reamer was. So that's going to be 218. And then we're also going to need to know R2. R2 is the radius of the cutter itself, right? Remember that we touched off on this furthest most point of the cutter here on the insert. But actually, because there is a radius down in that corner, actually the, the part that's furthest uh, down, the lowest point of the cutter, is actually um, back away from that edge, a distance equal to the radius, right? So it might seem a little counterintuitive, but we're actually going to over travel the cutter a little bit to get it past that um, furthest most, I guess, uh, the circumference of the circle that the cutting edges inscribe when it's actually spinning. We're going to get a little bit further than that and over travel so that we can get this lowest most point to line up with the, uh, the apex of the hole there. Okay, but we have to know what that radius is. And it's going to be, you know, the tool nose radius here on these inserts is going to be some nominal size in increments of a 64th of an inch. So it's going to be 164th or 132nd or 364th or 116th or something like that. Okay, and there's an easy way to check for it. You just use radius gauges. So here's a little 132nd radius gauge that I grabbed out of the bigger radius gauge set. And uh, this looks like it's a pretty good fit. That matches up pretty well right there. Okay, so 132nd of an inch is what we're going to call this. So here's what we're looking at right here. Number four is to calculate the, the y-axis position. Here's the formula. You just put in all those numbers that we just figured out. 1 inch 906 minus, uh, and it's important that this is in parentheses. So you do everything inside of the parentheses first. So 640 plus 218 minus 32 thousands, right? And then you subtract that whole, that whole thing from 1 inch 906. That gets us 1 inch and 80 thousandths. That's how far over we have to go. But remember that we, uh, we touched off with a 3 thousandths shim, so we also have to account for that, right? So we're actually going to move over 1 inch and 83 thousandths of an inch, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So one inch and 83 thousandths on the digital readout is right there. And lock the table down. Let's see how well that lines up visually. Just so we can get a quick little double check there. Yeah. I mean, that looks pretty good. OK, let's do this thing. OK, remember that we have to take a little cut on here. So let's go ahead and touch off. Do a quick little static touch off here. Nice and gentle, just like that. Lock that quill down, zero out the knee, like so. Okay, back it up one revolution, off the part. Go back in one revolution, and uh, we're going to take five thousandths. Turn it on, take a cut.
Okay, I've got the indicator set up again. I've zeroed it on the bottom of the hole. Now I'm going to pull it back up onto that surface and see how much more I have to go. And it's telling me 11 thousandths on the money. So that's how much I'll take. Okay, so I'm back in my y-axis position, one inch and 83 thousandths. I'm back in my position on the knee where I just took this last cut. And so I need to take another 11 thousandths. So I'm at five thousandths on the dial right now. So I'm gonna go to the 16. So it's 15 and 16 right there. Take a cut. No guts, no glory. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. Bring the quill up. Move off the part. And there we have it. There we have it. And it feels pretty good. Yep, that feels pretty good. Wow, okay. And you can tell from this uh, close-up side view that it looks visually well blended as well. Just gotta take it out now and hit it with the file. Yeah, so there we go. Part number four is done. And uh, that's it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in part number five, in which we finish all of the outside surfaces, and then that'll be that for this project. See ya.